What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here. In this next video, what we're gonna discuss is the factors affecting the price elasticity of supply. Now, as I mentioned in the video, when we talked about factors affecting the price elasticity of demand, different sources, different textbooks may have a different list. So there may be less factors in the textbook that you're using, there may be more factors, but for the most part, a lot of the factors that I'm gonna talk about should be in your textbook and should be the same factors that your prof covers as well. But you may need to adjust the list depending on what you're covering in your specific class. Now, before getting into the actual factors, I want to do a quick review of the price elasticity of supply. We covered that in a previous video. So it basically measures how much the quantity supply changes with a change in price or how responsive producers are to price changes. So the more responsive they are, the more elastic that supply is going to be. The less responsive they are, the less elastic the supply is going to be of that particular good or the more inelastic. And another more casual way to maybe look at this is how easy it is for producers to produce that product. The easier it is for them to produce it, the more elastic the supply. The tougher it is for them to produce it, the less responsive they are, the less elastic that supply is gonna be of that good. So when we're going through these factors, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to intuitively relate them back to this definition of the price elasticity of supply. Now the first factor that we'll go over is the time consideration after price changes. And this was also a factor when we covered the price elasticity of demand. But with the price elasticity of supply, it's actually going to be a bigger deal. And the reason why is because in the majority of cases, it takes longer for producers to adjust to price changes than it does consumers. Consumers can just go to another source usually pretty rapidly versus with producers, they have to adjust a lot of resources. So with time consideration, we're actually going to be looking at three different time periods. And so we're going to split it up into the first time period it is called the immediate market period. And that's going to be right away after a price changes. What's going to happen, we're also going to look at the it's called the short run period. Sometimes you'll see this called the fixed plant period. And when we discuss this in more detail, I'll let you know why it's called the fixed plant period. But this period of time, usually on average, it's usually a couple of weeks or months. After that price changes, how is that quantity supplied going to change a few weeks or months after the price change? And then the final period we'll go over is the long run. And sometimes this is called the variable plant period. And on average, this is a few, a year or a few years. After that price changes, how is that quantity supplied going to change? Now, just in general, like the price elasticity of demand, the more time that elapses, The more time that goes by, the more elastic the supply. Not always, it's always going to depend on the particular good that you're looking at, but this, for the vast majority of cases, this is what happens. So I'll just put in general here in quotation. So the more time that elapses, the more elastic that supply is going to be. And so what's going to happen? We're, by the way, going to go over each of these in more detail in a second. But before we do, basically what's going to happen is, for example, in the immediate market period, because it's right away, not a lot of time has elapsed, the supply 
is going to be less elastic or more inelastic. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a supply curve that's inelastic. It's just going to be a vertical line. In the short run, some time is going to elapse, weeks, months. And so there's going to be more of a cur um, more of a slope to the supply curve. So it's maybe going to look like this in the short run, in general, on average. And then in the long run, the supply is going to be even more elastic. And so there's going to be less of a slope. So it's going to be like that, right? More horizontal than this one. So in general, this is what's happening. Basically, the more time that's going by, the more elastic the supply. And so the slope is just getting less and less. So let's go over those three periods of time in a little bit more detail, starting with the immediate market period. And let's give it a more formal definition. So it's basically the period of time right after a change in price where producers can't respond with a change in quantity supplied. And so taking this and intuitively relating this definition to that supply curve. And a good example of this is a farmer. So let's say that a farmer, it's the end of the growing season, the end of the harvest, and so they have their crop and they have brought it to the marketplace. And so let's say they assume that the price is going to be here. So they have a quantity supplied right there. That's how much they produce. But let's say that it's the end of the growing season and then they bring it to the marketplace and they realize that the price has gone up. Because it's the end of the growing season, they're not going to have enough time to adjust that quantity supplied. That quantity supplied is still going to stay the same. It's going to be the same quantity they're bringing to the marketplace. And so that quantity supplied is still going to stay the same. And so that's how you get that inelastic supply right there in the immediate market period. Okay? They don't have enough. The producers don't have enough time to adjust that quantity supplied. Now, there are some exceptions to this, and an exception you may see come up in certain textbooks is if a product can be easily stored. So how easily a product can be stored. And that's gonna actually be another factor that we'll discuss later but it kind of relates to this over here, the immediate market period, because if a product can be easily stored, then what happens is it's easier to adjust that quantity supplied in the immediate market period. Okay, so if that price goes up and that product is easily stored, then what happens is that the producer can draw on some inventory from that storage and so they may be able to adjust that quantity supplied a little and bring it up so there may be a little bit of a slope to this but for the most part in the immediate market period that supply is going to be inelastic right so the easier it is to store the more of a slope there may be potentially because if the price goes up then what happens is the producer can draw on that inventory. If the price goes down, then they can take the supply and store it for futures when the price goes up. So most crops are perishable, okay? So they can't be easily stored, but there are certain things like wheat, for example, it has a long shelf life, so that can be stored. So with wheat, there may be more of a slope here in the immediate market period. But for the most part, that supply in the immediate market period is going to be inelastic. Moving on to the next period, so the short run or the fixed plant period. And that's basically the period of time where plant capacity is fixed, but labor and raw materials is variable. Right? And so because that plant capacity is fixed, producer can't go and build more new plants they don't have enough time because remember this here as we mentioned it's basically a few weeks or months after that price changes so they can't build new plants but they can increase their labor and raw materials for that plant capacity that they have that fixed plant capacity that they have now 
here I wrote the plant capacity is fixed, but sometimes you may see other factors of production that are fixed in the short runs, like uh, some textbooks may mention that machinery, fixed assets are fixed as well. They can't be changed. So just in general, basically the short run is a mix of fixed and variable. factors of production. So perhaps a more general description of that time period. So the immediate market period, all of the factors of production were fixed, even the labor and the raw materials, not enough time to adjust those. In the short run, it's a mix of fixed and variable factors of production. And then in the long run, all of the factors of production are going to be variable. So going back to that supply curve here and going back to that example of the farmer. So let's say that we have a price here. We have a quantity supplied over here. But let's say that the price of a certain crop that the farmer is growing increases at the beginning of the growing season. And so because it's at the beginning of the growing season, now they're gonna have enough time to adjust that quantity supply. So they can't go, it's not enough time to go buy a new farm, for example, increase that plant capacity, but they can apply more labor towards that crop, maybe less labor towards another crop, more labor to this one. They can add more raw materials. And so they can adjust that quantity supplied somewhat like that, right? With a price increase. And so that's why that supply is gonna be more elastic. There's gonna be a slope there versus before it was just a vertical line that quantity supplied couldn't be adjusted. All right, so that's the intuitive reason why plant capacity is fixed in the short run or machinery is fixed, but labor and raw materials are variable. Those can be adjusted. Now, the last period is the long run or the variable plant period. And as we mentioned, that's a few years after there is a price change. So it's the period of time where all factors of production are variable or all factors of production can be adjusted. So there's no fixed factors of production. It's also enough time for competition to adjust. So new firms may enter or old firms may leave that industry for that particular product that you're looking at. And so relating all of this to that supply curve and going back to that farmer example, let's say that we're right here. And what happens is that there, let's say that the farmer believes that over the next couple of years, a certain crop is gonna to continue to increase in price. Well, if they believe that, what can happen is they can start maybe buying more land for the future, buying more farms, making more investments in larger fixed assets in order to adjust that quantity supplied over the long run, over the long term. And so what would happen is there's a price increase and then that quantity supplied would really, or you know what, let's say there's even, let's say they believe there's gonna be a somewhat price increase. Well, even that increase in price, they may adjust that quantity supplied in a large amount, right? So the more elastic that supply is gonna be, the less steep that line is going to be, right? And then you can look at this, remember, we can look at demand curves and supply curves, as we mentioned from a single producer's perspective, but you could also look at it from the whole industry, from the whole market. And so you can look at this from the whole market perspective because new firms with a price increase of a certain good, more firms are gonna start producing it. And so if you look at this quantity supply from the whole market, it's gonna be a larger increase.
So you could look at this from a single producer's perspective. You could also look at it from the uh, total market that quantity supply is going to increase. All right, and so that's pretty much it for the first factor. It's also going to be the longest factor that we'll go over, the time consideration after price changes. So just in general, the more time there is to adjust to a price change, the more elastic that supply is going to be. And now moving on to the rest of the factors that are affecting the price elasticity of supply. The rest of them we're going to go through a lot quicker than the first one. They're going to be a little less intense, which is nice. So we actually mentioned the second factor in the first factor, the ease of storage. And as we mentioned, the easier it is to store a certain product, the quicker that quantity supplied can be adjusted, the easier it could be adjusted, and so the more elastic the supply is then of that good. Versus if it's harder to store, then the less elastic the supply. You can't just draw an inventory if the price increases and if the price decreases, then if a product is hard to store, you can't store it, right? So the less elastic that supply, the tougher it is to adjust that quantity supplied. Number three is the availability of inputs, raw materials, or just factors of production in general. And just intuitively, the more available those factors of production are, or the less scarce they are, those raw materials or inputs, the easier it is for that quantity supplied for a producer to adjust that quantity supplied. And so the more elastic the supply is going to be of that good. And then the, uh, the opposite, the less available, those inputs raw materials are or the more scarce they are, the tougher it is to buy them, the tougher it is or the longer it's going to take for that uh, quantity supply to adjust and so that supply is going to be less elastic or more inelastic. The fourth factor is the spare production capacity or how much production capacity is available. And so the more production capacity there is still left to be utilized, the easier it is for a producer to produce more, to respond to price changes. They don't have to go and buy a whole new plant. There's still room in the plant for production to occur. And so the more elastic that supply would be, the easier it is to adjust that quantity supplied versus if there's less production capacity, then now the, if they want to increase that production, they have to go and buy more long-term, larger fixed assets. And so the tougher it is to adjust that quantity supplied the less elastic the supply is going to be in that case. And then number five, the complexity of the production process. So again, very intuitive. So the more complex that process is going to be, so maybe certain training has to happen for employees if you want to get more employees. Or this kind of relates to number three as well, that availability of factors of production. So maybe a certain input is tough to find, which adds to the complexity. So just in general, the more complex the process, the production process, the less elastic the supply is going to be, the tougher it is for producers to adjust to a price change. And then the less complex that production process is going to be, the easier it is for a producer to adjust that quantity supplied. And so the more elastic the supply is going to be then.
All right, so all very intuitive. Basically for all of these factors, you can just ask yourself how easy it is for a producer to respond to price changes, how easy it is for a producer to change that quantity supplied. And then the final factor, the number of competitors. And again, we mentioned this somewhat in that first factor, but the number of competitors, this factor actually looks at the market or that specific industry as a whole versus looking at that quantity supply for a single producer. And just in general for that whole market, for that whole industry, the more competitors there are in that market, the, um, the more that quantity supplied or the easier that quantity supplied can be adjusted for that industry, for that market as a whole. So the uh, more elastic the supply is going to be. Or that good in general. And then the less competitors there are when you're looking at that x-axis or that quantity supplied less competitors so the less that quantity supplied can be adjusted for the whole market so the less elastic the supply then is going to be all right and that's a wrap for the factors affecting the price elasticity of supply so as i mentioned you may have to adjust the list according to your textbook but for the most part you should see the same intuitive explanations come up and a lot of the same factors come up with whatever textbook you're using.